Truths with Pastor V. I'm a senior pastor of Gola Ministries. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the victor's crown. The victor's crown. We'll be seeing all most of what we're dealing with in the book of Revelations. Revelations. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 7. It says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Wow. That's so powerful. You see, the book of Revelation, listen to what it says when we read from chapter 1 from this one. It says the revelation from Jesus. So the book of Revelation is the revelation from Jesus. That is very important. It's the revelation from Jesus, which God gave to him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of the prophecy, of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart, what is written in it. Because the time is near, or the time is short. John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and is to come, from the seven, church, from the seven spirits before his throne. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Powerful. You see, the first thing that we see here in the book of Revelation is that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ. You know the word revelation, it just means to reveal or to unveil or to uncover. Or you know the word has to do with appearing, the appearing of something. Or the appearing of Jesus Christ. But check this. First, the revelation takes place, is first uncovered. For example, something, we can see something is there, but it's covered. That thing has always been there. Then you come and take off that cover. You remove that thing that is covering that thing. So that is unveiling. Then suddenly you discover something that has always been there, but you didn't know that it was there. So that is the revelation. Or maybe an example, you open a door. You, you know, you didn't know what was that side. But as you open the door, you can see. We say, wow, there's been always something that side that I didn't know. So that is the revelation of Jesus. But check this. Also, a revelation may take place from you. Which means this thing has always been there. It has always been in front of you. But your eyes have been covered for you not to see. Listen to what the Bible says. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 13. He said, but their minds were made dull. For to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is wet. It, it has not been removed because only in Christ is taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is wed, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Check this. The veil of the children of Israel, he said at first it was in Moses. It was in Moses' face. Remember when Moses went to pray, and when he came back, the Bible says his face was shining. His face was full of glory, such a way that the children of Israel couldn't look at him. But the Bible says, as he came back, he took a veil and covered his face. But check this. As he covered his face, the Bible says the veil was 
on the Moses face. He said, but now the veil is on their hearts. Their minds have been blinded. Remember, the Bible tells us that the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them that believe not. So, first of all, the veil can be in that thing there, but also the veil could be in someone else's heart. You know, Paul, he says, the eyes of your mind being enlightened, listen to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom, check this, and revelation, so that you may know him better. You know him better. You know God like revealing himself to us. You know, when this book of Revelation was written, was written to a church that was suffering, church that was going through persecution, a church that was no longer sure what is happening, whether Jesus is with them. So Jesus reveals himself in the book of Revelation. We will see how he reveals. And soon, then he says, he's coming quickly. What does it mean? You know the word quickly, it means suddenly. Oh, it means something that can happen anytime. But check this, the way God count his coming or his days, he does not do it the same way men does. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. He said, but, he said, but do not forget this thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. So as is coming soon, but we do not calculate his coming as man does. But he is really coming soon. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And then he says to the, he says, this message was delivered by an angel to John. It was delivered by an angel to John. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that angels, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 14, he says, Are there not all ministering spirits sent to serve those who inherit salvation? So there are angels of the Lord that are always around us. You see, the word, of, the word angel also can refer to a human. But for now, we'll not say much about that. But check this. Then he says, blessed is the one that reads. Number one, he said, blessed is the one that reads. Number two, the one that hears and the one that keeps what the prophets of this book. Number one, he reads. Number two, he hears. Number three, he keeps the prophets of the book. You know, in the book of Revelation, this word blessed is repeated seven times. It's repeated seven times. The first time is where we read in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. It says, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And say, blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. And we see also Jesus emphasizes this thing. Remember, we are talking about the overcomer's reward. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, he says, when I he says, then I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now. Yes, says the Spirit, they shall rest from their labor, for their deeds follow them. When you check this, he repeats this in different scriptures until seven times. And to show the importance of what is what is talking about, number seven in the Bible talks of divine fulfillment. When you see the Lord emphasizes something over and over until seven times, it shows that this is very much important. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. But check then what he says. Then he tells us, he says, to the seven spirits that are before the throne of the Lord. Seven spirits that are before the throne of the Lord. That's what I want us to see today. Seven spirits that are before the throne of the Lord. What are seven spirits? What are seven spirits? You know, there are those that say those seven spirits are angels that are before the Lord. But you see, let's hear what the Bible says. 
The Bible is its own interpreter. The Bible interprets itself. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Zechariah, chapter 3, verse 9. Zechariah 3, verse 9 in the Amplified Bible. He said, For behold, upon the stone which I have set before Joshua, upon that one stone, upon that one stone, are seven eyes, are seven eyes or facets, the all embracing providence of God and the seven fold reverence of the Spirit of God. So this Spirit, they represent the sevenfold of God. I have already said that the word, rather number seven, speaks of divine fulfillment. Divine fulfillment. When you read also in the book of, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, glory, 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 glory. When you read also in the book of Revelation, you, remember, you, you will see that seven spirits is repeated over and over. But listen to what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 1 and 2. So first, first of all, I want to submit to you that these seven spirits are the seven spirits, the sevenfold spirit of the Lord that manifest themselves in seven different ways. It's the same one Holy Spirit who manifest himself in the representing the fullness of God. And the nice part is that that fullness of God is supposed to operate in our lives. It's supposed to operate in your life. Listen to what the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. Remember, Jesus is called a branch. In the book of Jeremiah. And he says, check this. He says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So the first spirit of the Lord that we see, the first spirit that we see among those seven spirits is the spirit of the Lord. Is called the spirit of the Lord. What does what is the spirit of the Lord responsible for? I'll show you. Luke chapter 4. Verse, seven, verse 18, Luke 4, 7, rather Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So Jesus comes and is proclaiming. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Check this. You will see what the spirit of the Lord does when he comes on you. Oh, glory. Check this. He said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. Number one, to proclaim the good news of the gospel. So first of all, the Spirit of the Lord makes you proclaim the gospel, gives you boldness. And the Bible said they spoke the word of God with all boldness. And check this. And he says the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners and recover of sight for those who are blind and to, to set the oppressed free. So you see, when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you, listen to what the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So when the Spirit of the Lord comes on you, you will make you proclaim the gospel with boldness, with power, with signs and wonders following the sick being healed. Many things happening. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is responsible for. So the reason why sometimes you don't see many of these things happening is because many don't have this power of the Spirit of the Lord operating in their lives. But also, check this number Number two, when we're reading in the book of in the book of Isaiah chapter eleven, number two, he says the spirit of wisdom. So number two is the spirit of wisdom. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, the spirit of wisdom. You see, this is not just the wisdom that you acquire by going to school, or this is not the wisdom that you is something that we have learned, being learned or knowing some things. This is the supernatural wisdom of God that is caused by the Spirit of God. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of in the book of 2 Corinthians 
Rather, it's First Corinthians, First Corinthians 12, verse 8. He said, For to one it is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. This is the super. I, I will read for you Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. Colossians 2, 3. He says, In him, he's talking about Jesus Christ. In Jesus, in him are all the treasures of divine wisdom. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. He says, Comprehensive insights into the ways and the purposes of God. So this spirit of wisdom helps you to know the ways and the purposes of God. Ushers, ushers you to that divine realm where you can know how to chart your course successfully. When everyone else does not, does, doesn't know what to do and where to go, you know exactly what to do. You know exactly where to go. You know exactly where to invest. The spirit of wisdom is working in your life, directing you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Check this. He says that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory, 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 glory. The spirit of wisdom. Then thirdly, is the spirit, is the spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. Ephesians 1, 18. He says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Remember where we read in the book of 2 Corinthians, he said their mind had become dull. The dullness of the mind there was talking about the spiritual dullness. They couldn't understand the things of the spirit. But he says, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, on your life, when these seven spirits of the Lord are at work in your life, he says the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. He said that you may know, oh, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches and the glory of his inheritance in the sun. But check this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Luke 24, 45. He said, then open he their understanding. Check this. When Jesus came and broke the bread before the disciples as they were talking about him, not, in rea not realizing that he was the one just walking with them. Check this. The Bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see, this spirit of wisdom, or this spirit of understanding helps you to understand the scriptures. Helps you to understand the ways of God. It gives you understanding. You see the word understanding here. It just means the ability to, to, to comprehend. The ability to put together the pieces of a puzzle. You know, to, to, to be able to put together what is happening. That can happen by the Spirit of the Lord. When anything is happening in your life, when anything is happening in your business, when anything is happening in your ministry, when anything happy is happening in anything that concerns you, suddenly you can interpret, you can know exactly what is happening by the Spirit of God. You see, when you know what is happening by the Spirit of God, you can know exactly what to do with it. Then number four is the spirit of counsel. The spirit of of counsel. What is the spirit of counsel? The spirit of counsel has to do with guidance. When the Lord guides you, when the Lord leads you, when the Lord, you know, brings promptings in your heart and showing you what to do and not to do. And, and, and check this. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14, it says, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. Those that are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of John chapter 16 verse 13. John 16, 13. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, check this, the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. The word, the Greek word there for truth, it has to do with true truth, divine revealed truth, absolute truth, the highest kind of truth. You know, there are different levels of truth, but the truth that is talking about here is absolute truth. The ultimate truth. The word of God is the ultimate truth. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, check this. He says, when it's come, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
he will guide you into all truth. So when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Not some of the truth, but into all truth. Oh, glory, 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 glory. You will not be confused anymore. You will not be wondering anymore, how did this happen? How is this happening? No. Then number five is the spirit of mighty. The spirit of mighty. The Bible says in the book of Judges chapter 14 verse 6, it says, The spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson, and he tore the lion as oh, he would have torn a kid. And the Bible says, and he had nothing in his hand. That is powerful. He tore a lion with his bare hand. The spirit of mighty, when it comes on your spirit, when the spirit of mighty is at work in your spirit, in your mind, and in your body, and in your emotion, you are always strong. You are not weak. You are strong spiritually. You are strong mentally. You are strong emotionally. And you are strong physically. And then we see the spirit of, thank you, Lord Jesus. Number five, number six. We, so we see the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge. You know the spirit of knowledge? Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Mark 4 11. He says, And he said unto them, To you it has been entrusted the mysteries of the kingdom. To you it has been entrusted to know the mysteries of the kingdom. This is the supernatural wisdom. This is, rather, this is the supernatural knowledge. This is the knowledge that you didn't go to school for, but it's the knowledge that the Holy Spirit gives you. Then lastly, is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. Listen to what the Bible says in the book of Job 28, verse 28, in the Amplified Bible. It says, but to men, he said, behold, the revelation, the, the revelational, uh, the revelational and worshipful fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil, that is understanding. So the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord helps you to walk in the midst of where there's a lot of corruption, where there's a lot of things that are happening. But the fear of the Lord helps you. This is not the fear of the Lord of fearing the Lord, but the worshipful, being all of the Lord. The last verse is Philippians 2.12. He said, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not, not in my absence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and fill you with your spirit, that the seven spirits of the Lord will manifest in your life completely and make your life glorious in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.